It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. And the news is for week commencing April 21, 2024. And this week, Stephen Green again, VK2 TSG, National WIA Director. David, VK4DN, Secretary, Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club. We'll look at Coordinated Lunar Time, or LTC, which is aimed to aid missions requiring extreme precision on the moon. And as time ticks by, you'll hear lots more news you can use. Plus wait, there is much, much, much more in this edition of news from your Wireless Institute of Australia. I'm Editor Graham, VK4BB. Who listens to radio? Hi, this is Dan, VK6NAD. Maria, VK5MAZ. This is John, VK4JJW. Lee Moyle, VK3GK. This is Angelo, VK2NWT. Hello, this is Stephen Green, VK2TSG, one of your national WIA directors. Do you remember being a newcomer to amateur radio? Or perhaps you've had a friend in this situation recently. Hearing terms being thrown around before they're explained can sometimes be daunting or even a little off-putting. Consider a beginner picking up a publication, only to find it difficult to fathom the purpose of an interesting-looking device within, let alone understand some of the terminology. The nature of radio means that there are so many facets and areas of information to pick up on that the learning curve is quite steep. Knowing where to begin can be difficult, so hearing unknown terms adds proverbial noise to the mix. As amateurs, clubs and the WIA, we need to consider this and how newcomers to radio will relate to technologies discussed. This might be a little easier to adjust to than you might think. Simply adding a few sentences explaining what a device is for or where a device is used and why, goes a long way towards forming those links in our education. We might also take a few more words to spell out an acronym when it's first used in a conversation or article, after which we can use the initials again. There's actually no need to reduce the technical content, or dumb it down as some would say. It takes just a few moments and a few extra words to open up our conversation, article or presentation to a larger audience. It helps grow understanding and interest in learning more. Although it won't create a complete understanding, it may even have the reader putting your article aside for further study or to come back to once they've learned a little more. Never be hesitant to ask questions or provide feedback, even suggestions on how we can make radio, particularly education, more accessible and easier to relate to. We all have a shared interest in bringing more people into amateur radio, and this is where you can play a part. Until next time, 73. That's best wishes from Stephen, VK2TSG. G'day Australia, this is David, VK4DN from the Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club. Can you believe it's now only two weeks away until the WIA convention happening here in Bundy? Wow, where did the time go? It's going to be a great weekend for amateurs visiting our town from all over Australia. The event includes not only the AGM and the gala dinner, but also a great ham fest and commercial expo. The Hamfest and Commercial Expo will have many interesting displays and you'll be able to grab yourself a bargain with show specials of new gear and lots of used equipment from the many vendors. There'll also be lots of great giveaways and door prizes. Bundaberg is an RV-friendly town, so if you're planning to set up camp on the weekend, there are a lot of options available. Don't hesitate to contact our club if you have any questions about the WIA weekend or to book a table for the Hamfest. We look forward to welcoming you to Bundaberg on May the 4th and 5th, only two weeks away. 73 from David, VK4DN, Secretary, Bundy Amateur Radio Club. We are VK1 WIA. Now, international news with VK2 LAW, Jason. Hello, and international news is with special thanks this week to Amateur Radio Newsline. Trash from the ISS may have hit a house in Florida. A few weeks ago, something from the heavens came crashing through the roof of a Florida home, and NASA is on the case. Homeowners were not at the residence at the time. A home security camera captured the sound of the crash at 2.34pm local time. 
And that's because it's a close match for the time. U.S. Space Command recorded the re-entry of a piece of space debris from the space station. At that time, the object was on a path over the Gulf of Mexico, heading towards southwest Florida. This space debris consisted of depleted batteries from the ISS. If the object is owned by NASA, the homeowner's insurance company could make a claim against the federal government. But it gets more interesting if this material is discovered to be a human-made space object which was launched by another country, which caused damage on Earth. That country would be absolutely liable to the homeowner for the damage caused. NASA has been tasked by the White House to establish a lunar-centric time reference system known as Coordinated Lunar Time, LTC, to aid missions requiring extreme precision on the Moon. The agency has until the end of 2026 to set up LTC, which is not akin to Earth's time zones, but provides a frame of time reference for the Moon. LTC will accommodate the slightly faster passage of time on the Moon, approximately 58.7 microseconds each day compared to Earth due to its lower gravity. It will serve as a benchmark for timekeeping for lunar spacecraft and satellites critical for their missions. NASA's Artemis program, set to begin astronaut missions to the lunar surface in 2026, necessitates LTC for synchronisation among Earth and lunar satellites, bases and astronauts, without which data transfers and communications could be compromised. Developing LTC will require international agreements, possibly influenced by the Universal Coordinated Time Standard, with potential implementation involving atomic clocks on the Moon and adherence to existing space agreements like the Artemis Accords. You must not sell. This item brings the latest chapter in a long-simmering patent dispute between Motorola and Hytera. A U.S. federal court in the Northern District of Illinois has prohibited High Terra Communications, a major provider of two-way radios, from selling, distributing or importing its radios, quote, until further notice, end quote, requiring the company to pay a daily fine of $1 million to the court if they do not comply. Even as it acted in compliance with the U.S. court injunction, Hytera separately announced it was withdrawing its own counterclaims against Illinois-based Motorola that it had filed in a Chinese court. Hytera has denied claims that its H-series radios have infringed on Motorola's trademark and copyright. The U.S. court injunction banning the radio's global sales came just as High Terror was preparing to show at ISC West, a major security conference being held in Las Vegas. Tower of Power. This year has not been kind to broadcast radio towers in the United States. The latest towers to be destroyed are in West Virginia, but this time it was by an act of nature, a fierce windstorm with gusts of up to 90 miles an hour. The high winds destroyed two of the four towers, serving the West Virginia Metro News Network's flagship radio station, WCHSAM, and its sister FM station, WCHS, a news, talk and sports broadcaster. The AM radio station, which broadcasts on 580 kHz with a 5 kilowatt signal, is the primary entry point emergency alert system for West Virginia. Its programming serves the southern and southwestern part of the state. Questions remain on how or when the towers would be replaced. A Florida researcher has developed three-dimensional RF filters that may one day save space inside smartphones and Internet of Things, IoT devices, leaving more room for batteries, someday paving the way for 6G wireless devices operating in the terahertz range. The researcher calls RF filters the entire backbone of wireless systems. Writing earlier this year in the journal Nature Electronics, it was explained how the 3D filters were developed to take the place of more commonplace flat resonators, which have varying thicknesses depending upon the wireless frequencies they're using. By comparison, the 3D resonators, known as ferroelectric gate fin, or FGF, are able to handle frequencies between 3 and 28 gigahertz. The March edition of the IARU Monitoring System Region 1 newsletter has been published. 
Of note this time is a Coastal Ocean Dynamics Applications radar reporting interference with almost all of the 12 metre band. The IARU Monitoring System Region 1 has started an action about this radar. You can learn more about this in addition to the wide array of strange and unidentified signals impacting our amateur radio bands at iaru-r1.org. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4 FUQ. Hello there. Now, Contest Wise 2024. The St George Amateur Radio Society will again be holding the Don Edwards Memorial Slow Morse Contest. This year will be on Saturday 18 and Sunday 19 May. Full details on the St George Amateur Radio Society's website, sgars.org. IAA had your World Championship the second full weekend of July, that is 13 14. Start 0 hours UTC Saturday. In 23.59 hours UTC, Sunday. Trans-Tasman Low Band Contest, July 21st, and this is another official WIA contest, counting towards the Peter Brown Contest Champion Awards. Yoda Contest 2024. The session of this year's Yoda Contest will be from 10 hours to 21.59 hours UTC on 21st July, on the five classic bands using CWNSSB. August 17-18, Ramos Day Contest. Alara Contest. This is where wilds work everyone. OMs work wilds only. Saturday and Sunday, August 25-26. Oceania Digs Contest. October 5 and 12, respectively. Yoda Contest. Youth on the Air Test 303 will be from 10 hours to 21-59 hours UTC on 29 December on the 5 Classic Band CW and SSB. DX window to the world. A reminder that International Marconi Day is coming up on the 27th of April. Once again, the Cornish Radio Amateur Club in the UK is organising and running the event. Lots of amateur radio stations will be operating from sites that Mr Marconi operated from or had a personal connection with. Certainly are, Felix, and among these stations, 62 in fact, is now VK2 IMD from around Wahurunga in New South Wales. VK2 IMD will be operating between 10 Sydney time Saturday until 10 Sunday, an operation from HF to all bands with many modes permitted. Now, there is more information on the IMD page on the HADARC website, and another very special station will be on air from Ireland. EI Zero MAR will have an award station during International Marconi Day. From Ye Old Hurdy Gurdy Museum of Vintage Radio in the Martello Tower in Howth, Ireland. The Martello was used in 1905 by the Marconi Company as a receiving station while the RMS Monarch transmitted radio telepathy signals from various locations in the Irish Sea, demonstrating the Marconi system to engineers from the British Post Office. For more information and to view a list of stations that are registered to take part, follow the International Marconi Day link on the website gx4crc.com. Listen for TM500NA from the 14th to the 28th of April to mark the 500th anniversary of the first visit made to the New York City area by European explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano. QSL TM500NA via F5PTI. Romania. Special call signs including YR95AR, YR95CC, YR95CH and YR95IN are among those calls active until the 31st of May. The operators are celebrating the 95th anniversary of the first amateur radio association in Romania's Arid County. This is being organised by CS Radio Club Admira. CQRZ.com for QSL details. Malawi. Don, 7Q6M is QRV until May 13 and has also been active on 160 metres. QSL via LATW. Liberia. The Czech D Expedition Group are active as A8OK until the 19th of April. 
with multiple stations from 160 to 6 metres using SSB, CW and digital modes. QSL station A8OK via LTW, Club Logs OQRS or via OK6DJ. Botswana. Active will be A25SHD from various locations in Botswana between 30 April and 13 May. QSL A25SHD via home call which is HB9SHD. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK for a few Q in Ingham. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, first up in Worldwide Special Interest Group News, it's CW. This is Richard VK6PZT. Do you know your dits from your DARS? Have you got what it takes to be the next International Morse Code Day quiz champion? Well, even if you don't, why not celebrate Samuel Morse's birthday and International Morse Code Day by registering for our Morse Code Quiz, hosted by the QRS Slow Morse Code team. The quiz is fun, informal, and we don't take ourselves too seriously. We have lots of easy multiple choice questions aimed at both novices and experts alike. So if you're interested, then please send me an email to vk6pzt at gmail.com and I'll reply with details and a Zoom link to join the quiz. Once again, the quiz will be held on International Morse Code Day, Saturday, April the 27th, via Zoom. If you'd like to register, send me an email to Victor Kilo 6 Papa Zulu Tango, that's VK6PZT at gmail.com. A special random gram event for Oceania. Since RG random gram events began in October 2023, they've become popular among CW operators in other parts of the world, especially the US. The activity hinges on correctly exchanging one or more five letter groups. An operator's log showing the exchange groups is checked against a master list and points awarded for both transmission and reception. How has RG been received down under? RG is pretty much still unknown. Most activity in Region 3 has been out of Japan, but typically poor daytime HF propagation for the Southern Hemisphere has resulted in low point scores for operators in Oceania. RG was created by Drew AF2Z. He noticed and commented on the trend down under and agrees that, given the opportunity, we could be doing a lot better. Putting his money where his mouth is, he's generously offered to run a trial two-hour random gram event to suit our down-under conditions, likely during our early evening hours to optimise propagation across the region. To make it worthwhile, Drew has asked for a list of at least 20 operators who are interested before he commits to run this proposal. Please email zl3tk at qsl.net with subject line Oceania RG to indicate your interest. Closing date is next Sunday, April 28th. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. NASA now knows what knocked Voyager 1 offline, but it will take a while to fix. Voyager 1's remaining flight data subsystem, FDS, its redundant copy, failed in 1982 and the reason that the distant spacecraft is currently offline. Voyager's FDS were the first computers on a spacecraft to use volatile memory. Unfortunately, one of Voyager 1's FDS memory chips is malfunctioning. NASA hopes that they can work around it, but it will likely take months. Nick Gregory, a member of the Furness Amateur Radio Society, FARS, was given an award by the American National Radio Society, ANRS, for his recent work. Nick, whose radio call sign is G0HIK, was recognised with a certificate for his radio signals bouncing off the moon's surface 19 times, with the signals then coming back down to Earth. He was operating in the 1.2 GHz radio spectrum, and despite the modest setup, as he described it, Nick has firmly put himself on both the international and interstellar maps. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Maritime. VK2WI News have reported on a milestone, the one-year anniversary of amateur radio operations aboard HMAS Vampire moored at the Australian National Maritime Museum. 
Since its inception, a dedicated team of 11 operators have been making waves in the amateur radio community, showcasing the rich history and vibrant presence of maritime communication. Every week, mainly Saturdays, the radio room comes alive with activity, offering a diverse range of CW, voice, slow scan TV, FT8 and 2 meter FM. In just the past 12 months, some contact with 40 countries, connecting enthusiasts from around the globe and fostering cultural exchange. But the impact extends beyond the airwaves, with approximately 50 visitors frequenting the radio room, many of whom are international guests. Sounds like how an old Brisbane club used to get behind the HMAS Diamond Tina at Brisbane's Maritime Museum. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Military, ZL6 Anzac, Wrights Hill Fortress Anzac Activation. A group of Wellington amateurs will be activating the Wrights Hill Fortress in commemoration of our Anzacs on April 25. They'll be operating from the fortress itself, which was built in Wellington during World War II, as a long-range coastal battery to protect Wellington city and environs from possible enemy attacks and invasion from Japan. The fortress consists of a large network of underground tunnels, operation rooms and three gun encampments, and is a fascinating piece of history. The activation will be during the Anzac Day Open Day for the fortress, and the ZL6 Anzac team will be showing and demonstrating to members of the ZL public what ham radio is and the fun you can have with it. Chase the ZL6 Anzac special call sign on April 25th and grab yourself a special call sign contact and a parks on the air park chase. ZL1PPY is also activating, so jump on the bands and make some great Anzac Day contacts. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Amity Young Timers, Yota, with Alec, VK2MV. Thank you, Cole. Pennsylvania's Eyewitness News on TV channels 28 and 22 have regular segment called Here's to You Kid. 28 and 22 news reporter I.E. Jagney met up with 14-year-old Samuel Thrall and gave viewers a look at the Monroy County Public Safety Center and Samuel's role there. Samuel has passed three levels of the FCC Amateur Radio Licensing Exam and now helps at the County Public Safety Center. In the event of an emergency situation, so say a blizzard happened, we would be deployed to various Red Cross centers through the country to establish communications and therefore relay any needs that the stations might need, said Samuel. What interested him in ham radio in the first place is simple. The scientific aspect of it, the sense is very interesting because it's a technology we use on a daily basis. Our phones are all powered by radio, just with computers built into them, Samuel explained. Samuel says his start in the field was an interesting one. I failed my swimming test at a Boy Scout camp one year, so I had to replace it and replaced swimming with the Radio Merit Badge, Samuel continued. From there, his passion for radio grew. And it's still growing to the extent he wants to eventually join the armed services in an electronic radio arm. Thanks, Alec. Next up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio. Active hurricane season predicted for the United States for 2024. Colorado State University hurricane researchers predict a very active Atlantic hurricane season June 1 to November 30. ARRL Director of Emergency Management, Josh Johnston, KE5MHV, attended the National Hurricane Conference in Florida, where the prediction was issued. Josh said, Several of the forecasters were pointing to indications that we're moving from an El Nino to La Nina, and that could potentially cause a more active season. The CSU Tropical Weather and Climate Research Team predicts 23 named storms during the Atlantic hurricane season. Of those, researchers forecast that 11 will become hurricanes, and 5 will reach major hurricane strength with sustained winds of 111 miles per hour or greater. The prediction is above the 30-year average for hurricanes and storms. Senior research scientist in the Department of Atmospheric Science at CSU and the lead author of the report, Phil Klotzbach, said, So far, the 2024 hurricane season is exhibiting characteristics similar to 1878, 2010 and 2020. Still on Rescue Radio, Ham Summon Help After Death Valley Distress Call. When getting on the air from a national park isn't a poter activation, but a call for help, 
other hams are always there, as one new operator in California discovered. We hear this story from Ralph, KK6ITB. A distress call from an amateur radio operator stranded in Death Valley mobilized some quick-acting amateur radio operators, some of them hundreds of miles away, to get the ham and his family some assistance. According to personal accounts and media reports, Moritz Wacker, KO6DZX, was camping with his family on Friday, April 5th, when their vehicle became stuck in the mud. Caleb Gustwiller, KD8TGB, and Craig Rower, KE8QJV, were among those who picked up his weak distress call on 28.430 MHz. The stranded ham had his radio along for the trip and used it. Caleb said in an email to Newsline that he and other hams who were listening, including fellow members of the Black Swamp Amateur Radio Club, heard him faintly in Ohio. Those hams, along with many others, posted on the Parks on the Air page on Facebook to get the word out. And still others called the county sheriff in Death Valley and police in San Diego, which QRZ.com lists as the ham's address. Other radio operators reached out to the National Parks Service Police. Caleb said it was an all-out effort from various locations. Caleb told Newsline that the stranded ham is a relatively new licensee. This was apparently a camping trip, not a POTA outing, but contacts made with the Zhigu G90 and Quarter Wave Vertical did the trick. According to all accounts, rangers found the family and they were back home safely that night. This is Ralph Squillacci, KK6, ITB. Thanks, Ralph. And finally, in worldwide special interest groups, VHF and above. Trans-equatorial propagation observed between Africa and Europe. Trans-equatorial propagation, TEP, between Africa and Europe on the 144 MHz band has been observed several times in recent weeks. On March 31st, V51WW in Nambia received SV8PEX from Greece over 6,532 kilometres away. On April 1st, QSOs between Nambia and Greece, Italy and Malta were made with SV8PEX 9H1TA and 9H1PA. On April 2nd, SSB QSOs were possible. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Currently portable in VK7. This is VK1WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au Across Australia from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In Borkham Hills, it can be heard on 147 megahertz on the Dural Repeater at 10 a.m. I'm Michelle, VK2 AYL. On the social scene, WIA AGM, May 4 and 5 in Bundaberg. Also in Bundaberg, May 4 and 5 is Parkfest. And Parkfest, also 4 and 5 of May, will be held in Dorigo. In VK3, May 11, Moorabbin and District Amateur Radio Club's Hamfest, Kingston City Hall. National Volunteer Week, right across VK, Monday the 20th to Sunday the 26th of May. In VK2, June 8 and 9, Oxley Region Amateur Radio Club's Field Day. The Australian Fox Hunting Championships in Mount Gambier, also 8 and 9 of June. Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club Radio Fest, August 18. In VK4, it's the Gold Coast Ham Fest. It happens October 13 at Narang Country Paradise Parklands, and that's on Bow Desert Narang Road at Narang. In VK5, Amateur Radio Experimenters Group, Radio and Electronic Sale, Saturday, October 26, 10 a.m., David Roche Park at Kilburn. Tasmanian Ham Conference, November 2 and 3 in Hobart. And in VK3, Spark Rosebud Radio Fest, November 17, Eastbourne Primary School, Alambi Avenue, Rosebud. Now till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Two weeks to go to the AGM. Walk softly. This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.